Hello everyone, Electro here. Um, first of all, I suppose, a bit of good news on the alternator front. Uh, the wire's out of it. Uh, one of the alternators is gone. That's off to the shop getting rewound. I think I know what I want now. I've done a lot of experimenting with uh, that one there, so anyway, I'll get that back in a few weeks, so I'll let you know how it goes. In the meantime, this is what I'm up to. I don't know what you'd call this. I suppose you could call it a um, magnetic crucible or magnetic vaporizing crucible or something like that because this is what I'm going to do anyway or how I'm going to make it. Uh, there's my, my block which I'm going to machine into a cup a cup shape with uh, holes in the bottom of it for, for gas flow and also a, a central hole for the electrode to pass through it so in effect you'll have a cup there with an electrode through the end of it. Now, around that, don't forget, when they center, they become much smaller. So, that's a centered one of those. So, that'll fit inside a magnet. I might even make an electromagnet, depends on how much strength it's needed to, to do this, but um, anyway, around the cup, with the electrode inside the cup, you got your magnetic field around it, and the other electrode will go down inside the cup there, so you can make your spark to vaporize the particular metal that you want in there, in the presence of a magnetic field, with the option of having gas flow, which would be your ionized argon gas with the electrons removed so it can covalently bond with the magnetizable metal ions which are being formed at the spark gap here. In the meantime while they're cooling, if they cool in a magnetic field that should make them permanently magnetizable according to some of the theories I've, I've, I've read on how they, they make mag magnets at the uh, present time but anyway uh, so in effect what you're have in one drawing is that there's your tube represented by that the magnetic field represented by this magnet the cup or the ceramic cup with an electrode through the bottom of it and also an electrode coming in that way so you can have your spark gap and vaporizing the metal that you want in there. Now, the metal that you're going to vaporize can be in just metal powder form, a metal sheet, or part of the opposing electrode. Um, it depends on how you set it up, but you can use a different electrode to vaporize different metals, so you don't have to make a, an electrode out of the metal that you want to vaporize each time. I'm working on that which it will mean that I will probably have to cast a custom made electrode to be able to hold different pieces of metal but I can do that, I've got the facilities to do that here so that, that's, that's cool and um, anyway getting back to this when the ionized argon which is passed through the VIC in the electron extraction circuit to remove electrons from it uh, goes through there it, like I said it should covalently bond with the vapors which would be permanently magnetized by the magnet off into the EPG and hopefully it'll work but uh, a long way to go yet uh, while I'm at it I'll show you these these are a few discs that I've made for Max Miller Iron Max um, i just turn the light on here and just show you guys and Max so you know what you're going to get. That's a nice multi-hole disc there. This one here, Max, has got a yellow side to it. That's the one with the jet off on the side, you can see there. That's what I thought about being a collection jet. So, see how you go. Uh, that's the one with the broken drill bit. 
while I was drilling it. Hang on, I'll see if I can get the holes. Yeah, there you go. The rest of the holes are okay. But uh, that black spot's caused from the from the drill bit. Because I didn't want to get it out. Just the elongate the hole. The, that hole is blocked, by the way, so there's, there's no gas passing through that particular one, so that should be fine. Now the holes there look pretty big, but they're not. They're only 0.32 millimeters, which is equivalent to 12th hour, I think. So it's right in between 10th hour and 15th hour, which is the maximum size of holes. Uh, there's also two single whole discs. Uh, one of these is smaller than the other. I don't know which one because they're really hard to tell the difference uh, both in the green state and in the sintered state. But once you pass a flame through them you should be able to easily tell which one's which. Uh, uh, I think that one's the smaller one but I'm, I'm not sure. Like I said you'd have to pass a flame through them. But uh, that's them. So There's five discs man, that are coming your way. So, oh, I'll send you a piece of unsintered disc as well, which is a piece of that before it goes into the furnace. As you can see, the, the size difference is a lot. That's the same size as that. And after sintering, that's the size you get. And it also shrinks that way. Um, of course, that's not one of those, but this was 20% bigger that way before sintering than it is now, but uh, mm, these ones came out quite nice, fairly sharp edged, uh, they should be good, but don't forget to seal the max, they have to be sealed, you can never ever tighten a ceramic onto a metal um, fitting without some sort of sealant in between. Anyway. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye.